Hello everyone, we will be discussing the physics concept waves. We will be demonstrating this concept using our instruments, the violin and the cello. You may have seen this before in your classroom. It is a wave diagram. Where do waves come from? To answer this question, let's focus on the violin. When I bow a string, I create a vibration that goes through the violin. This vibration travels into the surrounding air. This is called a sound wave. The air molecules are displaced. The wave travels to our ears and we perceive a sound. Depending on the vibration created, we hear a certain sound. The cello is another string instrument. It is roughly five times bigger than the violin. It produces much lower sounds, thus we would expect its waveforms to look a little bit different. Listening to it now, can you notice any differences between the waves it produces versus the violin we heard previously? There are three main characteristics of a wave that we're going to focus on today. These are amplitude, wavelength, and speed. Beginning with amplitude, amplitude is defined as the height of the wave, also known as the distance from the center line to the top of the crest measured in meters. The higher the amplitude of the wave, the louder the sound we hear. Notice the loud A note produced a wave much taller than the wave created by the soft A note. Thus, the amplitude of the loud note is much larger than the amplitude of the quiet note. Next, we look at waves in terms of their wavelength. The wavelength of a wave is the distance between two successive crests or troughs, the highest and lowest part of the wave, respectively. Notice, the A note created a wave with a shorter time interval between its peaks than the wave of the C note. Thus, the A note has a shorter wavelength than the low C note, even though its pitch is higher. Wavelength is thus a factor that determines a sound wave's pitch. The final main property of a wave we can measure is how fast it's traveling. As we have seen, the physical shape of a wave can be described by its amplitude and its wavelength, but the speed at which the wave travels we can think about in terms of its frequency and its period. Let's start with frequency. What does it mean when we say the frequency of a wave? Listen to this violin melody and try to determine how quickly the sound is reaching your ear. If you were listening closely, it may have seemed like there was no time difference between when the sound was played and when it reached your ear. However, there is always a slight time difference we can't hear because the waves move very fast. The speed of sound is roughly 343 meters per second. Imagine a car coming at you that fast from rest and think about whether you'd be able to anticipate it hitting you. Probably not. If you're still not convinced that it takes any time for sound to travel through air, think about the last time you saw lightning flash in the sky. Did you hear the thunder right away? Or did you hear it after the flash had already happened? To help you, here's a short video to help illustrate this. When looking at a wave speed, we define the time it takes for one wavelength to pass as one cycle. We know that the open A note on the violin has a wavelength of about 0.8 meters. 
Traveling at the speed of sound of 343 meters per second, we can calculate how many cycles pass every second by dividing this velocity by the wavelength. If we do this for the A note, we find that approximately 440 wavelengths, or cycles, pass every second into our ears. We would then say in physics that the wave has a frequency of 440 cycles per second, or more commonly called 440 hertz. Frequency is the speed of a wave measured in cycles per second. But another common property related to a wave speed is its period. The period we define as the time it takes for one cycle, or in other words one wavelength, to pass a given point. Frequency and period are thus closely related but are not the same thing. They are inversely related, so we can find one from the other with the following equation.